Hello and welcome to Making Waves by Dottebert. If you enjoy kit building, making electronic circuits, and do-it-yourself projects, then make sure to subscribe and tap the bell icon so you don't miss any of my most awesome videos. In front of us is the IC Station. This is an amplified dual speaker do-it-yourself kit with LED display. You can find us on Amazon running around $20. I'll have links below for you guys. Also, icstation.com sells it for right around 12 bucks. If you go icstation.com, it may take longer to get to your door versus the Amazon route. Just thought I'd tell you. So yeah, I bought this so I could probably try to use it with my headset radio. We'll see how this works. Here's the kit. The GY20915-1. Now, I usually show the manual with my iPad, but it's kind of hard with the camera and everything. So... You can download the PDF from icstation.com. I did. I have it saved. So if you guys can't find it, just email me and I'll send it to you guys. So yeah, here we go. So we get in the kit. Go ahead and open this bag up. I'm going to actually use a piece of board here so we don't lose any components while I do this. So yeah, we got some speakers here. A star of the show. They're little two and a half inch speakers. You get two of them, of course. You get an enclosure for each one. A lot of hardware. That's going to be fun putting together. Do that twice. Lovely, huh? Send the other one out. Yeah, quite the unbagging versus unboxing. Here's the other speaker. I'll see if it's damaged. I haven't looked at this yet, so looks all right. Leave it up there. There we go. Cool. So that's a start. So what else we get here? Okay, looks like the main component bag. And this clear bag is empty, so we'll get rid of that. And this here looks to be sealed. Wow, I'm going to have to open that up. Like I said, I have not been in this kit whatsoever. Uh, I looked a little bit on the PDF file, but uh, yeah, I didn't get a chance to really open this up and study it. So let's get a pair of scissors and cut this thing open. Live. <laughs> well, pre-recorded, but to you, live. Um, I'm going to make sure I don't cut anything important. Okay, cool. So we got that out of the way. So that, all right. So first thing, I'll we get some wiring. Okay, so this looks like the cable that's going to run between each speaker. Um, nice. Get it off to the side. We got another cable. It's like our patch cable. Yep, we got wires going to the PCB and going to your device. So I'm hoping that'll work well with the Sony Walkman here. I'm hoping it'd be cool for the stereo and sounded good. What else we got? We got our kits here. Okay, so this is like a board with a bunch of components. I think it's twice because you have to build two of them. <laughs> Again, the joys of this kit is going to be doing it in duplicate. So, okay, we got another wire here. I guess the power wire. I'll show you what's inside these little bags in a second. But yeah, here's our power wire USB uh, driven. So you can use it with a power bank, which is cool. So you can go portable. Uh, I'm happy with that. And then you got your channels there. It looks like right and left channel. So that's, or excuse me, positive, negative wire. I'm thinking audio still. Yeah, power cable. All right. Then we got some patch cables here, it looks like, to wire the internals. I'm guessing. There we are. And they got everything out of the bag. Okay, everything's out of the bag. Throw that aside. And then we get this Chinese manual. So yeah, definitely download the PDF because otherwise you're going to be lost with this thing. I don't think there's any English here. Oh, wait, there's some English here. Holy cow. <laughs> so it's a pretty basic. Uh, it shows you a circuit diagram, um, PCB layout for each of the small boards. I guess you could build it with just this. Um, if you take your time, I don't think it'll be that difficult. All right, so there you go. Through all components, most of it. I thought I saw a uh, surface mount chip, so I'm going to have to look and see. Um, left and right channel. It's pretty cool. Okay, so there you go. It shows how to mount it. And I think the back's probably going to be all in Chinese. It's all in Chinese there, so we'll get rid of that. Like I guess if you want the PDF, just email me, the About section. So let's go ahead and open up one of these bags and see what we get for components. So right away we get one of the amplifier boards. So I guess this will go in one of the cubes where one of the speaker resides. And as you can see, hold this correctly to you guys, uh, looks like we have capacitors, resistors, um, leads in for power. This might be like the main one. Here's our diodes. We got five diodes. Actually, it'll probably be like this in the speaker with the five diodes up on top. And I guess you'll want to make sure you do the right color combination because um, there's green. I think there's three green, one yellow, one red. 
yeah. So there you go on your LED driver board. Okay, very cool. Aha, there it is on the back side. They're going to have to solder in a small surface mount. Now, it's not a big deal because what you'll use is like a small iron tip. I'm going to use this here, this tip, um, for my uh, HACO or HACO, however you say that, FX795. Uh, that's my soldering station, and I'm going to hook this up. And I'm just going to put a little solder there, tack it. Okay, it's going to tack one leg down and make sure it's centered with this leg. And then I'm just going to do a drag solder method, which is you flux, flux this area with some paste flux. And then you put a little solder on the tip of your iron and you just drag it across. If you make any bridges, try off your iron and just run it through in between. And that'll clear out your any bridges you made. So pretty simple. This will be the hardest thing to solder. Just take your time. It's really hard to mess up because uh, you can always desolder it and try again. Just don't have your iron on the pin too long. Uh, that's the problem most people have is overheating their chips. So cool. All right. So what else we get in the little bag? And then we're pretty much ready to start building this thing, huh? So it looks like we get some resistors. Good value ones. Nice. Nice tolerances. Good to see that. We get some LEDs, potentiometers. It's in my hand here. Looks like some high quality capacitors. That's good. So there's our LEDs. We get three green, one yellow, one red. Okay, so that's probably your threshold. Um, that's pretty neat. They'll be like dancing lights, you know, for your left and right spectrum. Hoping that's how it works. These out of my hand here. So you guys can see them. There they are. Christmas colors. <laughs> awesome. Boom. Okay, there's the surface mount, dude. <laughs> Don't know if that's going to come into focus, but yeah, that's your amplifier. Uh, believe it or not, uh, there's a number on there, 8002A or something like that. Yeah, so there you go. There's your little SMD. Boy, you got to do that twice because you got to build it twice. So good practice, guys. This is excellent practice. Um, and you'll have something useful when you're done, which I think is fantastic. Um, here's your electrical capacitors. Looks like you get about, what, five or six of them. Like I say, I think some of these are audio rated. These look better quality-wise here. Not sure what brand that is, but they look better. They have a gold and green to them. When you see that, you know they got to be a little better quality than these black ones. Black ones usually for more for your power. Okay, so you get the idea, and then you get these little two variable potentiometers. I'm guessing setting for level, maybe LED intensity or uh, sensitivity, and then we have the driver LED driver board right here. Simple. It is a one-way thing, so you notice how it's. Got a diagonal cut on one side and a normal cut on the other. I was trying to get that into focus. It says something there. Okay, whatever those numbers mean. All right, we're done. <laughs> Show you that. The good ones. Well, we're not done completely yet, but this gives you an idea of what you to expect with the kid. Um, so, yeah, I better put some of these back in this bag. And I'm going to show you a few tools I'm going to use, and then, yeah, I'm going to break away and show you some pictures of the build process because building it live is normally it's pretty boring to watch somebody solder I, i'm not really a fan so i just like to take pictures of what i've done and you know go over any problems i ran into uh while i give the uh narration of the picture uh it's the best way and then of course you can ask any questions in the comment section below as you build your own kit and i'm always available 24 7. <laughs> seriously always email me to get a response pretty quickly Okay, so there we go. We're going to move this stuff off. And I'm going to show you some of the tools I'm going to use. I say some because I might run into a tool where I didn't think I needed it, like the solder braid. Um, I have used that in the past because I made a mistake. Yes, I make mistakes. Todd Herbert makes mistakes. <laughs> so anyway, you saw a tip I'm going to use. This is going to be for the uh, SMD that's service mount. I see. I'm going to use that to tack it and maybe do some drag. Uh, I'll also have the normal tip here. Um, using it for the normal through-hole components. Okay, and this is my what I'm running here. I think temperature-wise, I run it around 700 to 750, depending on the connection point. And I like running it kind of hot, so it goes quickly. Uh, Solder-wise, I like to use a uh, called rosin core uh, tin lead. So um, this is what I like to use right here to give you an idea. Good brand, made in USA, I believe. Um, excellent stuff. So. Um, I have a couple of rolls of this stuff. It's a pound. It's going to last me forever and ever. <laughs> uh, you know it. Uh, a couple little tools. don't know if I need these, but we got a little screwdriver, a little Phillips. Okay. Um, you can pick these up off Amazon pretty cheap. I don't know about the Wea brand, but uh, different brands are going to be fine. They'll hold up. 
I've got a 10 power loop. Uh, this is used for gems, but you can also use it to inspect your PCB board. You know, if you're looking and you want to see if you made a mistake, uh, it's always good to have some magnification and 10 power will show everything that you might have done wrong. So handy little thing to have. Rock on. What else do I have for tools? This is a very popular tool right here. I don't know if you could still pick one up. It's a Craftsman. <laughs> These are nice. But uh, wire strippers. So yeah, you got 16 gauge all with the 26 gauge. That's a really small wire. Look at that. Tiny, tiny wire. Of course, it has a little lock here. You can unlock it. You can cut here and you can splice here and you can actually use pliers on this end. So just a great thing to have in your toolbox. There you are. I have a pair of diagonal... Uh, side pliers here. I like these for tightening nuts so you don't scratch anything. Um, so if you slip, you only have the rounded part that's going to hit anything. So I do like to tighten things with uh, curved diagonal pliers. So they got a little spring on them. Okay, Again, very handy tool. Uh, flush cut cutters, diagonal cutters. These are great. Uh, these will help cut the legs off your projects, the component legs that come through, pass through the board. Uh, this will flush cut really nice, really close to the board. Uh, don't use this on he any heavy wire, like stainless steel wire. You'll ruin them. Only use them on the tin uh, legs of the components, and you'll be fine. These are made in USA. And use safety glasses, too, definitely. But uh, very cool Ceron cutters. I always have these handy, high quality. And then one more thing I like to use is a voltmeter. And I just got this. I'm really happy with it. The Venlab VM200M. Uh, this thing tests everything for five bucks. Um, if you don't have one, get one. Um, if I can remember, I'll put a link below to this tester. It's It was like five bucks on sale. It's amazing. And you get the leads. You get two batteries. It runs a AA batteries. It has a light on it. You, know, you can test your voltage. You test continuity, which is probably what you're going to do. It's got a backlight to it, which I think is neat. Turn that off. But right here, you have a continuity test. You can test transistors if you have to. You can test current. So this is for like radio building and radio repair. You can test your resistors to make sure in case you drop all those resistors and not sure what the value is and you don't want to look up the colors, you just test it. So again, five bucks, definitely a good buy. So there are the tools I'm going to be using to build the kit. So I'm going to break away. We're going to fade to black and we're going to start with the pictures of the build process and then we're going to write the demo in the kit. All right, guys, here we go. Here are pictures of the build process. This first picture, I installed two of the 8002B surface mount amplifier ICs using the drag solder method. Note the pin one orientation. Take your time, use some tweezers, tack one pin down, flux the other leads, and then drag the solder. Works perfect. Second picture, the PCBs were then populated with eight resistors and two KA2284 LED controllers. Note orientation on the controllers. Uh, picture three here. I added 12 electrical capacitors. Note orientation on the negative pin. Pretty simple. Now we're on to picture four. I finished populating the components by adding 10 LEDs. Note orientation with a 45 degree bend. And then I added four variable resistors. And this last picture, note the red wire position. If you followed the PDF file, it would not work properly. You'd only have one channel. If you put the red wire as you see in the picture, you will have stereo audio. That's what you want. All right, let's go to the desk here. So yeah, that was the one major problem I ran into was the um, looking at the photos on the PDF file and realizing that they were wrong and I only had one channel when I was done. I was trying to figure that out. And the only thing was one wire had to be moved over. Not a big deal. As you can saw in my picture number five there, you follow that, you're good. Or if you follow this cheap Chinese instructions here, this is actually correct in this illustration. But it's not worded right. Like it says left channel board, left channel board. It says right channel line, right channel line. It's like, so this should be left. But uh, anyway, if you follow these little lines here, that's how you get your left and right channels properly. So this is wired correctly. If you can make sense of that, uh, the PDF file picture was wrong. So there you go. Anyway, these are Chinese and hard to read. So anyway, let's go over dimensions real quick. Each cube is two and three quarter inches in all dimensions. Pretty simple. They're cubes. Um, I love them. They went together fairly easy. The most tedious part of this project is 
uh, adding the surface mount chips, as you can see there, and wiring everything up and building these enclosures. What a pain those were. <laughs> There's, they're just not fun to build. But uh, once you get the hang of it, you can put them together pretty quickly. But uh, other than that, yeah, that was the only major uh, problems. Everything else went together real simple, like the through-hole components. Um, yeah, everything was pretty straightforward. So you have a distance between these speakers of 27 inches, which is great for most applications. I love it. You have 29 inches of lead length from your uh, input jack and your USB power. Um, that is nice, handy. Um, I like that. Now, while using this device, I noticed the uh, audio, of course, as RFI because it's USB. So if you're using USB wall jack, uh, you're pretty much only going to be using MP3 players, and that's it. If you're going to want to use your Sony Walkman, you're going to want to use um, a power bank at the minimum. And at the end of this video, I'm going to talk about mod potential. There's a couple mods I would like to perform with these cubes, and I think you would agree. So, But uh, this will get you by uh, if you don't want to do any mods and you just want to hook it up and go. Uh, get yourself a power bank. Uh, if you can do a power bank with a low power mode, that's even better. Engage low power mode because if you're tuning your radio and it's not producing any audio during the seek tune, this will turn off because it's not drawing enough power uh, in an idle position. So something to think about. Uh, make sure you have a low power. I have to make sure to check this to make sure the power is running. It's got a little blue LEDs there. So <laughs> if, if it doesn't work, it's because this is probably turned off and I'll turn it back on. Uh, but something to think about. And of course, I'm going to talk about a mod you can do to get the best signal quality on your radios. If you're looking to use this uh, for a headset radio uh, for speaker source and you want the best audio capable of DXing, yeah. This, the mods are going to be great. So let's go ahead and first um, look at these devices, and then we'll do some uh, demoing, which is fantastic. We'll get to hear these. So we'll look at it real quick. Here it is assembled. There's our two and a half inch speaker in there. As you can see, plenty of room in here, and uh, you really can't add a battery. So if you're thinking about putting a battery inside the cube, uh, 18650 will not fit. Um, it just there's not enough room uh, to put it in there. Uh, but that's one mod thing I'm going to talk about. But uh, there's ways around that, of course. Uh, but there's definitely some other mod room here. So there's a surface mount chip. And as you can see, my wiring, there's a lot of wiring here. This is the main one with all the wiring going in for power, your headphone jack, and then your four wire lead going to the other speaker. As you can see uh, how that four wire lead is, you got your yellow, green, and you got your blue and red. Now just note that that's the correct wiring. Not the PDF file, that is correct for right and left channel. A beautiful stereo sound. I do like it. Um, and of course, you have the two adjustable potentiometers. Just make sure they're equal on both speakers. You'll be okay. Uh, the 503 uh, is for your uh, amplifier. And I have it mine turned all the way up. Um, I don't recommend that if you're using it for radios. If you're using it for MP3 players, yeah. But for radios, you may have to turn them down. It's a little bit too much. And then the one above it, of course, is LED sensitivity, depending, again, on the radios you use. So pretty simple. I like how those are bent up so you can kind of see it from different viewing angles. That's why they have you do that. So it kind of clears the top of the speaker. I guess you could bend them all the way up. There's plenty of room in the case to go almost all the way up. So there you go. Cool. I like it. They went together really nice. Uh, let's go uh, hear what they sound like. So I have my MP3 player. We'll use this first. Got some uh, YouTube royalty free music and some old time radio shows. Let's plug it in and go. And uh, play. Well, first I got to some power to the speakers. Now there's no on off switch, so you just hook it up and go. So it's playing. Let's hook up our power. So now with it playing, it should automatically turn on. So let's go ahead and just plug it in. There we go.
Thank you, Mr. Bell. You're very kind. And set up like this takes your mind off your worries and troubles. So don't be surprised if I just sit back and relax and let you carry on. Well, that's what I'm here for. I've always said there's nothing like a good detective story for mental recreation. Most of our great men of affairs have been addicted to them, you know. Presidents, prime ministers, scientists, and businessmen. And the Sherlock Holmes adventures still head the list of all detective stories. What's it going to be tonight? Well, tonight, as I said last week, I'm going to tell you about the greatest shock that Sherlock Holmes ever gave me. The greatest shock? It must have been some voltage. Well, it was in the second year of my married life. I hadn't seen Holmes for almost a month due to having successfully resumed my medical practice. When what? So there you go. It's Wall Time Radio. This is cool. So yeah, you can have a lot of fun uh, with these speakers. So let's go ahead and disconnect this and let's uh, do what we probably have intended for. So I have my... This is what I originally was going to show you and this plug this in now we're just going to do am band because fm is rather difficult because it's uh there's no whip antenna it uses the antenna here connected to the device doesn't tend to be as good so what we're going to do is just go am band um, on the free odyssey app so you don't need a lot of volume here best warranty and complimentary maintenance plus available premium features like wireless device charging the Hyundai Tucson. Inbound Kennedy still heavy. It's an hour from uh, the airport from O'Hare. A lot of brake lights after Foster into Montrose. The outbound Kennedy is about 40 minutes. The Edens is about a 30 minute inbound trip right now from Lake Cook Road. No delays on the outbound side. There is an accident on the exit ramp between Willow and Skokie Road. Eisenhower, not too bad. 40 minutes in, no delays outbound. 30 minutes inbound on the Stevenson. 55, there is an accident blocking the three left. Lower pace. Year over year, the consumer price index is ahead by 4%. That was the smallest annual increase since March of 20. So there you go. It works with your radio. Cool. And it's with the power bank without doing any kind of modifications. Quickly, we'll go to another radio and then we're going to show you some mods and then we'll follow finalize this video it's going a little longer but there's a lot of fun here and it's really cool what you can do so i have a cc skywave let's go ahead and just plug it in here all right let's turn that up see if it's on it's off okay i'm on shortwave let's see how this works nice thing here with the seat crane is that it uh, has really good audio with these two speakers versus the tinny speaker on board. So let's see if I have any presets. When they die, the spirit beings go back away from the body and then come back and get reborn as another being, another person, another body. Reincarnation, incarnation, reincarnation. Very Eastern. So you can find people today who believe that. Actually, I think as Christians... And a belief in rebirth was held by such historic figures as down my basement. Let's hit uh let's go to FM. So the music uh, here, if it's in stereo, um, it comes up nice. So let's see if I got stereo. There we go. You won't hear it because I'm using a mono mic, but it sounds fantastic in person. And on Zoom with a whole lot of kids. Hello, everyone. Hello. LP Ingleside. From Feature Story News in London, I'm Julia Chapman. A man is in custody after three people were found dead in the British city of Nottingham. Another three are in hospital. <laughs> Thank you. 
So get the idea there. We can switch over to, uh, let's see, we have our weather band and, of course, air band. Wednesday night, northeast wind 5 to 10 knots becoming north. So you get the idea. It's cool. It works great. Fantastic for stereo-driven radios like this one that has a tinny speaker. Fantastic. And headset radios that don't have any speakers. Again, the way to go. This runs on one AA battery. I'm loving that. This runs on two AA batteries, giving you 70 hours of playtime. And of course, you know, depending on how big your power source is, um, you can design however you want. So let me just go ahead and move the Skywave out of the way. And let's uh, just finish this up real quick. So when you're done with your project, um, you have some mod potential here. Uh, these are great speakers. I'm enjoying them. Links below there. Uh, like I said, you can find these. I think they're like... Uh, uh, they run about 20, 20 to 25 bucks. Uh, I think 20 bucks. Uh, I'll have links again to Amazon. I think I found them for $15 on Amazon. So there's a link there. Uh, a little different color LEDs, but the same pretty much project. And of course, IC Station directly to their website. They're 12 bucks if you don't mind a slow boat from China. They take a while from China, let me tell you, up to a month, month and a half. So if you're not liking to wait that long, um, just go Amazon all the way. Uh, so mod potential, I love it. Uh, but before I do that, uh, you get extra parts when you're done with your kit. I got extra screws, which is good, and some extra resistors. Nice. Always good to have extra parts in case you lose it. So the best power thing, now see the, it already turned off, even though this is a live circuit, as you can see with my power bank. This is good. You don't have to do any mods right here. This is done. This can probably be good for most uses. But as you saw, it does have RFI from the power bank itself. Not too bad. It doesn't seem to travel on the line much. So, But if you want the purest audio signal for DXing with radios, I recommend building your own battery pack. <laughs> and that includes like something like a 18650 battery holder with an 18650 battery. And of course, you got to protect that battery with a power protection board and charging board to charge it. And uh, you'd build a box uh, or buy, buy a box that maybe has this with a switch, which is what you need. You need a switch also. Um, so you need these to make a mod. So your on-off switch so you don't run your battery dry because this is, this is on all the time. And then you have your charging board and your 18650. And yeah, with a draw of 200 milliamps, that's what these draw. Um, imagine you could run this for quite a while, you know, with about 10 hours or so. Yeah, I guess it's about right, close to that. Um, but uh, yeah, you can double this. You can add two batteries depending on the unit you buy. Got to run them in parallel, of course. Uh, I hooked the one up. It works. It works off the 4.2 volts. Uh, I don't know if it, as this goes down, if the speakers start to degrade. I haven't run the, the 18650, down, 18650 down, but I did go to 3.7 volts and it did work still. So not bad. Uh, so there's one mod you can do. And the second mod is very simple. It's just drilling a hole in the speaker, like in the back here, uh, in the case, and adding this jack. And this jack will be your audio in. And so you just take and wire your left and right channels and your ground to the board. And then you have your connection when you plug in any kind of patch cable you want. Uh, that's nice because you can use a shielded patch cable, which this one is not here, that could protect your audio. So that is really handy. And of course, you can use any length of patch cable you want um, when you use this jack. So. Perfect. That's a nice little added mod. So there you are. Boosted. I love it. Um, good little project. Definitely worthy. If you like a radio <laughs> and you have your portable radios, this is a, a great project to build and have and use um, as long as you're into wanting to tinker more besides using a power bank um, to power these speakers. Uh, I recommend maybe building your own power pack. That's kind of fun because this isn't producing any RFI when it's running. Uh, that power board does not produce any RFI when it's in running mode, only when it's your charging. So um, that's a neat setup. So that's something I'd like to do eventually. So there you are. I'm done with the video. <laughs> Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Uh, if you want to build these, uh, subscribe to the bell icon, get notified of future IC Station products and, and videos, and uh, see what you like building. And of course, three, comment below what you think about the IC Station's GY20915 kit, uh, amplified dual speaker.
uh, with the LED display uh, is something you'd want to buy and use with your radios. Let me know. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in my next video.